It's a Tuesday, February 8th, and it's time for your body to stay on a news update. The Democratic Labour Party adopts a wait and a see approach as the House of Assembly meets today to debate amendments to the Constitution that will allow the party an opportunity to have two seats in the Senate. DLP Interim President Steve Blackett says the party will closely monitor the debates on the Constitution Amendment Bill scheduled to be held in the lower house today and the upper house on Wednesday. He says that the DLP will then make a final decision on whether to accept the offer to appoint two opposition senators once the party felt it was done within the confines of the law. Meanwhile, leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, Bishop Joseph Atherley, has declined to say whether his party would be willing to name the two opposition senators if the DLP declines. He tells Bobby this today the matter had not yet been discussed by his party. I have not seen the amendment that being proposed that the parliament has been discussed tomorrow. I have not seen it. And therefore, I have not discussed that with the APP. So I am in a position to comment on it. I will have to see the amendment first. I will have to have a discussion with the APP. Public health officials are being urged to, to include positive results from COVID-19 rapid tests in the country's daily tallies. As the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners says, potentially thousands of cases are not being recorded in the most recent wave of the virus. BAMS Public Relations Officer Dr. Russell Brooms Webster tells Barbados today that while guidelines were established last year for the use of rapid tests, as a tool to quickly identify and care for infected people, a positive result is only recorded after confirmation from a PCR test, even when the rapid test is conducted at a public health care facility. Rapid testing is not included, even when it is done officially yeah. and submitted centrally, it all has to be confirmed by PCR. Uh, we, 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 we are only using PCR tests when we report our positivity rates and so on. Well, in many other countries, um, um, there's been a you know, there's been a move to war to try to identify all persons who are testing positive. Uh, so you can see that there's already an, a delay when that happens. A well confirmed test will be necessary. We can feel pretty comfortable that a symptomatic person who tests positive on a, an appropriate rapid, appropriately administered and um, verified rapid is is generally going to be infectious for COVID-19, especially in the context of limited resources. In a situation where we have significant community transmission, with almost 12,000 people being in home isolation, or probably you know, 20, maybe 20,000 or more who may be in quarantine. The Barbados Union of Teachers wants government to urgently address outstanding issues plaguing the school system as teachers and students prepare to return to face-to-face -face teaching on February 21st. And against the backdrop of last weekend's protests by parents and students over the delay of the full reopening of schools, Beauty President Rudy Lovell said, that while educators are not opposed to returning to the classrooms, they want to ensure this is done within a safe environment as COVID-19 continues to impact the country. The Barbados Union of Teachers emphasizes with parents at this difficult time. We want to reassure the public that teachers are willing to get back to the classroom for face-to-face -face instruction, but only when it is safe to do so. Teachers are parents too, and we understand the challenges. However, we are sure that everyone understands our desire for safe spaces for the benefit of the teaching and learning process. To this end, we support the call by the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training to continue the dialogue on a return to face-to-face -to -face classes. The BUT will like the provision of masks for teachers and for those students who cannot afford to purchase them. Cloth masks were previously provided. However, this time we are requesting N95 or KN95 masks. We would also like to ensure that school plants are properly outfitted to face the challenges that can result in a return to school with the presence of COVID-19. 
Lovell said he's looking forward to teachers' unions meeting with the Ministry of Education later this week on the matter of a safe return to this classroom setting. The BOT would like to see the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training come up with a comprehensive maintenance plan for the upkeep of schools, including schedule repairs and maintenance. The BOT is also interested in the development of a learning recovery plan to assist students in recouping some of the learning time lost over the past two years. As a union, we will be focusing on professional development to enhance the abilities, skills, and knowledge of teachers, as this can only enhance the teaching and learning process. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Centres were also permitted to stay open with officials citing the importance of the social development of toddlers. The education sector has moved to virtual avenues to continue the learning process. Minister for Education showed face-to-face classes were suspended for three weeks as the fifth COVID-19 wave disrupted operations with a number of educators contracting the virus. Officials allowed grades 6 and form 5 students to continue in-person classes in preparation for pivotal exams. Early childhood development centers were also permitted to stay open with officials citing the importance of the social development of toddlers. The education sector has moved to virtual avenues to continue the learning process. Minister for Education Sean Edward lamented the challenges associated with online platforms. I must say that I'm very happy that our students are back in school this morning, um, all the grade levels. This is what the Ministry of Education has been asking for. Um, I'm on the record as stating that this is the preferred modality. We know that COVID has posed a challenge and I've alluded to the fact that managing the education system in a COVID-induced environment has been a bit challenging and so we have had to resort to the online platform. That has had its, we've had our challenges with that. It is not having the desired effect and any opportunity to get our children in school um, is something that the ministry welcomes. So for me personally this morning, the students from kindergarten all the way to form five are in school and we're hoping that we will continue to manage the situation in country um, so that there can be very few disruptions moving forward. And uh, finally, the World Health Organization's COVID-19 technical leader, Dr. Mariah Van Kerhoof, reports that there has been a sharp increase in deaths around the world as a result of the virus in the last four weeks. The WHO official said as such, it is critical that countries not only increase vaccination coverage to protect people's lives, but also to reduce the spread. The global situation with COVID is very dynamic. We are seeing a record number of cases being reported to WHO each week. Every day, between three and four million cases are being reported to us, and we know that this is an underestimate of the true number of cases. What is extremely concerning is that we are seeing increases in deaths. And in the last four weeks alone, we've seen a sharp increase in deaths around the world. Omicron, the latest variant of concern, has quickly replaced Delta, the last variant of concern that was circulating globally. And this has happened very quickly. We've seen a very sharp peak in cases around the world, but not all countries have peaked in terms of their cases. And as I said, the deaths are also increasing as well. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.